take a little digression onto the AK model I mentioned earlier.
after the saving rate's gone up, so S high, uh, 16 will go up with capital and uh, output. So we raised the saving rate. That's, that's what we have.
must be the same everywhere. That's, that's what it means to have constant returns in the past count. So before we do anything to the saving rate, what would happen? If we looked at the solid model and just left the saving rate where it began, growth would just have been zero 
uh, forever once you've got to a steady state. What's the growth rate predicted by the, the AK model? Clearly it's positive. It's, it's, it's not going to be zero at any point. Um, if you look at it, you might be tempted even to think that growth is increasing, is accelerating. It looks like these uh, gaps between blue and red line are getting larger and larger. However, in percentage terms, what can you say about how the rate at which y and k are going up? It's actually a constant rate because these are, these are, these are straight lines. So in proportional terms, what you're adding to k and to y relative to what you already have, that's a constant. So growth will be some positive constant, basically based on how far apart the, the blue and the red lines are. So no stagnation, that's the first, uh, that's the first remark we can make about this, this model. You, you, you don't get stuck at zero growth. Even with no technological progress, we haven't had to devise a version of the AK model that has exogenous technological progress. Of course, people who work with the solid model don't literally believe that long-run growth is, is zero. They assume technological progress to make the model consistent with what we see in, in reality. But they don't explain it. They take it as exogenous. Here, this growth is predicted by the model without technological progress. It comes from capital accumulation. There's no limit to capital accumulation because the returns to capital don't diminish. Now, what would happen if we raised the saving rate? Suppose we have a higher saving rate. Suppose this initial saving rate was a low one. Let's have a higher saving rate. So saving line shifts up. Effects. 
for an economy's growth rate. Hi, I'm so sorry. Uh, may I know the GDP per person is what? Which is the area from the FK all the way to the K axis, or is it the SF between the SF, the SY curve and the depreciation curve? Sorry, repeat the question. Uh, may I know what is the how to determine the size of the of the GDP per person? The size of GDP per person. Yeah. Um, you would you read it from you read it from the, the height of the production function. So if, if, I, if I tell you what the capital stock of the person is, I go up to the FK line and across. That's, that, that's the level of GDP per person. So uh, won't, won't my GDP of person be the same if I were to follow the FK line? Wouldn't you, you with the higher saving rate? Yeah, yeah. I, okay, I, 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 I guess the fact this question is being asked means I, I need to draw the, I need to draw this case. I'm not going to lay it on top of the same diagram. Let me just show you what would be different. There, there's, there's no shame in asking a clarification question. Um, I didn't draw it only because it would have, it only because it would be messy and it requires a new diagram. But let's let, 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 let's, let's, let's make the effort. Thank you.